Okay, here we are, week two for Linguistics 102. Uh, this week we're looking at language classification. In this video, uh, introducing the week, I am going to recap last week's stuff, uh, preview the material we're covering this week, and remind you of some things that are coming up in our schedule for this week. So last week was all about getting our feet under us, getting started for the term. We had a good tutorial session on Thursday, and I'm hoping everyone had a good weekend and is ready to tackle this new topic. Uh, also, for recap, I want to remind you about the materials available in the overview module for anyone who's taking Linguistics 101 concurrently and those who have taken it long enough ago that you may have forgotten the stuff. Uh, they may help with some of the concepts specifically deployed in this chapter of the textbook for classifying the, the typology stuff. Okay, so here's a quick rundown of the material. Uh, the first section in the textbook looks at some basic issues relating to how and why we might want to classify languages. It's not just about the nerdy bean counting, wanting to categorize everything in the world. Um, there are practical reasons for wanting to quantify how many languages there are, how many languages there were last year, and so on, to identify the quantity, uh, identify and quantify the, the types of variation that they exhibit. Um, there's this really awesome resource, the World Atlas of Linguistic Structures. I'll link it in the discussion or the, the description of the video uh, where you can surf through some of the, the looking at a map of the world and, and looking at it in terms of different types of linguistic structures, linguistic uh, typologies that we can use to, to compare languages. Uh, we'll be diving deeper into the, the why of language classification, uh, as well as using some of these means of classification from this week when we talk about Indigenous languages of Canada next week. So after that section, that introductory section, is a big section on typological classification. That's identifying languages by linguistic properties they possess. And this is broken down into different areas of grammar, the phonology, morphology, syntax, uh, I've linked an article on E-Class, and I'll put it in the description as well, uh, about another area that isn't mentioned in the textbook, semantics, and specifically the typology of color term inventories across languages, which exhibit some patterns that you probably wouldn't expect just off the top of your head, but they seem to be pretty uh, well established. Um, so check that out. I think it's an important supplement to the material in the textbook. So after typology is a big section on genetic classification. And just to be clear, uh, this is grouping languages based on their linguistic historical relatedness, not on the biological genetics of their speakers. It's long established in linguistics that pretty much any person, given the right upbringing, can learn pretty much any human language. The differences in our genes do not determine our linguistic destiny. So... Uh, genetic classification in the linguistic sense, that genetic comes from the term genesis or origin, right? So it's looking at which languages have shared histories, you know, arose from common uh, historical languages. And it's a fascinating, really fascinating process. And uh, we get a nice glimpse at it in the chapter here. Uh, the chapter ends by pointing out some of the more uh, blue sky hypotheses out there. You know, did all languages develop from a common linguistic ancestor, for example, a single first language? It's a fun question to ponder, and it's neat to look at how you might go about answering it. Uh, given the type of information that is available to us, it looks like a definitive answer is going to remain well out of reach for the foreseeable future. But anyway... Um, so there you go. So there, there's a bit of motivation for classifying languages, and then we learn about two main approaches, the typological and the genetic. That's what this module is, is going through. Um, the key things in our schedule uh, to look at are the weekly tutorial on Thursday, which I encourage you to come to if you can, and the quiz. Uh, the first graded quiz, the one that's going to encompass this material isn't actually until February 2nd, but it's going to cover material from this week and from next week. So once you've gone through the textbook and the other materials for this week, and you think you have a handle on this classification business, uh, try the practice quiz for this module. It should give you an idea how you're doing with the material and show you how I might be asking the questions on the graded quiz. Um, right, so that's, that's it really. There isn't anything else urgent coming up in the schedule. Um, and that means that's about it for this week's video. 
So go through chapter seven of the textbook, try out the practice quiz when you're ready, come along to the tutorial, and as always, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'll see you around.